You're watching the Business English webinar series brought to you by Human English. You can find podcasts and videos of these lectures online at humanenglish.com. Hey, yes, hello. Welcome to the webinar. Today's webinar is Meetings in English. Okay? This is um, a webinar, uh, session one, meetings, setting things up. And this is the first of two sessions about meetings, okay? So I'd like to welcome everybody. I see some of you uh, have been here yesterday and last week, okay? So for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Monica. I am American, and I come from Philadelphia. This is a city located 90 miles from New York City. Um, and at the moment, I am working and living in Milan, Italy as an English teacher. So today we're going to talk about the summary. Um, let's look at what we're going to talk about today. First, we're going to be talking about um, arranging a time and place to meet, dealing with last-minute changes in a meeting, the language for organizing meetings, and we're going to examine English used for describing meetings, participants, and roles. Okay? Okay. Okay, so first of all, what is a meeting? There are two definitions of a meeting. Okay, one is an occasion when people come together intentionally or not intentionally. For example, we're having a meeting on Thursday to discuss the problem. Or I'm afraid she's in a meeting. I'll ask her to call you back later. Okay, so we usually say we're having a meeting or I'm in a meeting. Okay, the second definition is we have a meeting when a group of people meet for a particular purpose. Okay, the meeting wants to look at the proposal again. Okay, so many of you may have had meetings or organized meetings. Um, what's your general opinion of meetings? Is it a positive or a negative? Is it a positive experience or a negative experience? So you can just write that in your chat box. What is your opinion of meetings? Okay, Olga says it's positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gilmer is positive. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's good. Mm-hmm. Klaus said it's positive if well organized. All right. Okay, that's the key. Yes, Klaus was very good in that point. The key is that meetings need to be well organized. Okay, and some people have a negative idea of meetings. So, for example, here are some quotes by some people. For example, you can either work or meet. You can't do both at the same time. Okay, this was by Peter Drucker. Okay, meetings are indispensable when you don't want to do anything. This is from John Kenneth Galbraith. Okay, and if you can see this picture... Some of you may know this picture. Um, this is um, Captain Kirk from Star Trek. And he says, a meeting is an event where minutes are taken and hours wasted. Okay. So you can see here we have some negative ideas of meetings. Okay. So it really depends. In order to have a meeting be um, effective, it needs to be well organized. Okay. So does anybody know what the meaning of minutes is? Minutes. You can write that in the chat box. Anybody know what it means, the minutes of a meeting? Okay, so um, the minutes of the meeting is, let's see what you wrote, a short meeting. Okay, now so these are the points to be discussed. Okay, Olga, a period or time of meeting. Going through the time schedule. Okay, well, that's good some ideas, but actually the minutes of a meeting is a written record of what happens in a meeting. Okay, the minutes is the written record of what is going to happen in the meeting. 
So it's going to include the time and the place of the meeting, okay, the uh, participants who attended, the discussion, and what has been decided, okay? That is exactly what the minutes of the meeting. And we always say in English to take the minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, what are some reasons people have meetings? Can you just write down some meeting, some reasons why you have had meetings? Okay, so let's see. To point out problems, right, Olga? Going through to understand what the others are working. Okay. And to share ideas, right. That's very good, Olga. Share ideas, right. And Klaus to get results, right. Okay, all of those are good answers. And there are actually three good reasons for holding a meeting. Okay, one is brainstorming. So brainstorming is a common method that people use at work when they share problem-solving ideas. So the members come together to share problem-solving ideas and they contribute ideas. So that's one time that we have a meeting. Another one is to deliver information and then to gather information. Okay? And always in the meeting, we're always sharing opinions and ideas. Okay, so whenever you have a meeting, you should ask yourself, why am I having this meeting and what do I want to accomplish? So you want to have a reason or a goal to the meeting. Okay, if not, poorly organized meetings can waste people's time and poorly organized meetings only serve to demotivate the people. Okay, so it's always important to have a reason for a meeting. Okay, now we're going to look at some language for meetings. So I'm going to dictate some words to you twice. Try to see how many words you can remember, and then you're going to write them in the chat box. Okay, so listen carefully. I'm going to say them twice. Try to remember as many words as you can. Okay, matters arising. Matters arising. Emergency. Emergency, monthly, monthly, agenda, agenda, participant, participant, item, item, and reach a consensus, to reach a consensus. Okay, so I see that Evelyn and um, Olga and some others have written some things. You wrote some of the words. And, um, right, that's very good. I also see um, Alex, uh, Klaus, right. Okay, so let's look at the words now. You'll see them coming up here. Okay, matters arising. So matters arising means the new points or the issues that occur or come up in the meeting. So a matter is a point or an issue. Arising is to come up. Okay. Then we have emergency. Emergency is urgent. Monthly. Okay, that's every month. Okay, here we have an interesting word, chair. To chair a meeting. This is a verb. Okay, and this is a very important word related to meetings. Does anybody have any idea what does it mean to chair a meeting?
Mm -hmm. Classwork carries the leader to lead a meeting. Right. Right. That's very good. To chair a meeting means to lead the meeting. So usually every meeting has a chairperson, which is a man or a woman who is going to ensure that the meeting reaches its goals and aims. Okay. It's the person who's going to preside over the meeting to ensure that all of the participants have an opportunity to express their opinion. Okay. We also have the agenda. It's important to have an agenda, a written list of points to be discussed. Participants are the people who will be coming to the meeting or attending the meeting. Item is the point or issue on the agenda. And to reach a consensus is to reach a decision in the meeting. Okay, which of these words can go with the word meeting to make a phrase? Okay, there are three of these that can go together with the word meeting which will make a phrase. Okay, right, Gunter said meeting agenda, mm-hmm, we are having this meeting, Evelyn, we are having this meeting to reach a consensus, mm-hmm, right, that's good, okay, so you can actually use um, the word meeting with some of these words, monthly chair agenda, okay, meeting participant, yes, okay, let's take a look at some other ones, an emergency meeting, so your the boss or the chairman can call an emergency meeting. You can have monthly meetings. Okay, sometimes people have monthly meetings or daily meetings, and to chair a meeting, right? Okay, to chair a meeting is always to lead the meeting. Okay, okay. So what makes meetings effective? Here we see some points which will help to make meetings effective. Okay, first you need to have a written agenda. The objectives should be clear to everyone present. Okay, there should be good planning, good time management. It's important that the meeting is not too long because you want the participants to stay involved and active. And it's also important that everyone is given an opportunity to contribute. Okay, so there should be an exchange of ideas or the participants will feel demotivated. And finally, effective control from the chairperson. The chairperson needs to keep the meeting on track. Okay, so let's look at a list of things that you need to do to organize the meeting. All right, this is a to-do list. You can see circulate the agenda, set a date and time. Notify the participants, email the minutes of the last meeting, book a room for the meeting, write the agenda, prepare the agenda, and check people's availability. Okay, so some of you may have uh, organized a meeting or have gone to a meeting, so you may know some of the steps of the to-do list that need to be done uh, when having a meeting. So this is not in the correct order. So take a few minutes to look at these eight points and try to see if you can put them in order, what would be necessary when organizing a meeting in the correct order that they would occur. You can put them in the chat box, you can put them by numbers. Okay. Okay, right. So Gilmer. Gilmer said number eight. First check people's availability. Okay. Set a date and time. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. Evelyn has a lot of, has written all the order of the meeting. Right. 
Okay, so some of you have written in the order. Um, and let's take a look now to see. You can compare your answers with the answers here. Okay, so the first one it says is four, to email the minutes of the last meeting. Okay, so it's important first to email the minutes from the previous meeting that you had. So everybody is up to date with the events of the last meeting. Then would be eight, check people's availability. Two, set a date and time. Five, book the room for the meeting. Three, notify the participants. Seven, prepare the agenda. Six, write the agenda. And then the last one would be circulate the agenda. Okay, so that's usually the order when you organize the meeting of the things to do. It's always important to plan and to prepare for the meeting. Okay, how do we arrange a time and place for a meeting? One way to arrange a time and a place is by email. Okay, so here you have an email. Take a few minutes to read, take a minute to read this email and then write down in the chat box if you think this is a formal email or an informal email. Okay, so if you, after reading the email, do you think this is formal or informal? Okay. Right, okay, so Olga and Evelyn said formal, okay. Gunter said in, informal. Okay, well actually this email would be a more formal email, okay, a formal email. And the reason is, is because if you look at this um, email, you have a ending with sincerest apologies. Okay, that's a quite formal ending. Okay, also there is a lot of complicated vocabulary. You can see some words, unfortunately, unforeseen set of circumstances, unavoidable, and at your earliest convenience. Okay, so you can see that the vocabulary is quite formal and polite. So this would be more of a formal email to somebody uh, in maybe a higher position at work or it could be a work colleague that you do not know that well. Okay, okay, let's now compare it with another email. And you can take a minute to just read over this. And then write down if you think this one is formal or informal. Okay, so uh, Klaus and Gilmar has written informal. Right, that's correct. Good. Okay, you can see in the second email, the introduction is high, and also the closing is all the best. Okay, this is informal language. Okay, so the opening and closing is more familiar. Uh, there's also the use of contractions. For example, I've and will, that indicates that it's more informal. And also, there's more informal vocabulary, okay? So you can compare the two, and you can see the difference. We can use emails to arrange the time and place for a meeting, and you can write emails that are formal and informal, depending on the people you are writing to. If you look at these emails, which person do you think is the, um, uh, the person who is the boss or the person who is in a higher position? 
Paolo or Anne-Marie? Okay, right, that's very good, Olga and Evelyn. Paolo. Paolo would be the boss or the person in the higher position because he has written in a more informal way. Okay, and Anne-Marie has written in a more formal way. So emails are a good way to use uh, to set up meetings, and you can do it both formally and informally depending on the person that you are writing to. Okay, another way to arrange a meeting is by telephone. And by telephone, it is usually much more informally because you are speaking to the person. So let's look at some of the sentences to arrange a meeting by telephone and we'll decide if it is talking about time or place. Okay, so what about the first one? Are you still okay for Monday? Would that be time or place? Time, right, Evelyn, that's good, time. Okay, um, it's taking place at the Four Seasons Artista Hotel. Would this be time or place? Right, Klaus, Olga, right, you answered correctly, place, okay. We'll have to put the meeting off till Wednesday. Good, right, time, okay. Now we have a word here that says put off. Put off is an important word that we often use in meetings. Does anybody know what put off means? Another verb for put off. Okay, Klaus has written to end. Okay, it's not exactly to end the meeting. Okay, put off is not to end, but in this case we're saying let's put off the meeting till Wednesday. Okay, so it means to postpone. Okay, to postpone, right, okay, yes, to postpone the meeting, okay, right, or you can say delay, right, Olga, okay, so we can usually use to postpone or to put off the meeting, it is a phrasal verb, okay, let's go to the next one, we better meet on Tuesday instead, would this be talking about time or place? Time, right. Okay, we're holding the meeting in the Manson Suite. Mm -hmm. Place, so you can see we can also use holding the meeting. It looks as if Friday is going to be difficult. All right, time. Okay, we could move it to next week. Time, okay. Is it possible to change the date? Change the date, time, right. And room 411 has already been booked out. Right place. Okay, so I see that all of you have gotten that correct. Okay, so it's important to use different expressions to set up the time and the place of a meeting, and you can do that by phone, okay? One of the important things is always to book the room, to reserve the room, okay? And also to keep in mind the time. Meetings shouldn't go on too long as they can be ineffective, okay? Okay, so let's look at this picture. We see a man that is worried because there are some last-minute changes, okay? Sometimes we can have a last-minute change uh, to a meeting. We can change the time or the place. Here are some expressions, okay, indicating a change in the time or place. We could move it to next week. Is it possible to change the date? It's been moved to the boardroom. It's been delayed till 4.45. We'll have to postpone the meeting. Okay, so here, if you remember, we could also say put off the meeting. And we'll have to cancel the meeting. Okay, there is a phrasal verb for cancel. Okay, if, does anyone know the phrasal verb for cancel a meeting? We said for put off was for postpone. 
What about for canceling a meeting? Okay, Gunther said not taking place, right? Okay, well, that's correct. The meeting is not taking place tomorrow or next week. That would be one way to put it. We also say the meeting is canceled. And we also can say the meeting is called off. Okay, to call off the meeting. Okay, call off means to cancel. Okay? Right, okay. We'll have to call it off. Okay, now we come to the agenda. In a meeting, it's very important to have a written agenda. And on the agenda, we have the matters or the issues that will be discussed in the meeting. Okay, there are different ways to write up an agenda. Okay, first we can use, for example, personal notes or a post-it note. Um, and this would be very informal. Maybe the chairperson would write that on a post-it note what the agenda of the meeting would be. In this case, it's to review the employee benefits and to compare areas for cuts, okay? They're also gonna decide a course of action. And then we have AOB, which is written at the end of the uh, agenda. AOB is usually found at the end of an agenda for a meeting, okay? Have you ever seen AOB? And um, do you know what AOB stands for? Okay, AOB is usually written at the end of an agenda, and it's at the end of the meeting, and it means any other business. Okay, so any other business, that means things to discuss at the end of the meeting. Okay? Mm-hmm, okay. So, we can also have a formal agenda. This isn't a formal agenda. You can see that you have the, the place, the date and the time. Okay, there are six points that are going to be discussed at the meeting. Okay, and this would be in a formal way. We have another formal agenda here. Uh, it's the manager's meeting. It has the objective to reduce the cost. And again, the date, the place, participants. And that would be the agenda. And then finally, we have a summary of an agenda that would, could be on a PowerPoint slide. And here you can see the issues. They're going to be talking about benefits, cuts, action, and lunch. So the agenda is always a written form, and it can be an informal way written up, or it can be in the formal way written up. Okay? Okay. Now, we're going to go to the language of meetings. You're going to see some language that we use in meetings. Some of them are formal, and some of them are informal. I'm just going to read through them. Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome to the meeting today. So we're just going to go straight in now. So just need to set a time for us to come back. So diaries when everyone is free. Okay. Does anyone have any matters arising from the last meeting? So we've heard from everyone. What we'll do is have a look at each idea. You should have a copy of the minutes of the last meeting. Has anyone got any other competent business? And make some apologies for any absences. The last time we were here, we discussed. I'm glad everyone was able to make it. Okay. So some of these are informal and some are formal. They're both used in meetings. Let's look them over now. And can you find any expression? Which expression could be used to quickly review the last meeting? You can just write the number down in the chat box. There could be more than one answer. So if you look at expressions 1 to 10, 
which ones of them would be used to quickly review the last meeting. All right, that's very good, Gunter. Sentence nine. The last time we were here, we discussed. Right, okay. Right, Olga's also said four and six, so that could also be. Does anyone have any matters arising from the last meeting? Or at six, you should have a copy of the minutes of the last meeting. Okay, so that would be reviewing the last meeting. How about to discuss AOCB? Now, I mentioned before AOB means any other business. AOCB means any other competent business. Okay, so which number would that be? All right, sentence seven. Has anyone got any other competent business? Competent means relevant, important. Okay, something that is relevant or important. And it's usually said at the end of a meeting. Okay, the next one is to open the meeting. Any expressions that you see that could be opening the meeting? All right, Gunther said one. Hi, guys, welcome to the meeting. Mm-hmm, anything else? And ten. I'm glad everyone was able to make it. And also it could be number two. So we're just going to go straight in now, All right? This is a good way to start a meeting. We're going to go straight in, okay? To apologize on behalf of those who were not able to make the meeting. Okay, that's eight, right? And make some apologies for any absences. Mm -hmm. Discuss items from a previous meeting. Okay, this was also similar to the first one. So this is discussing the items. Okay, could be four. Does anyone have any matters arising? And nine, right. The last time we were here, we discussed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome the participants. To welcome the participants would be one. Hi, guys. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Sum up the content of the meeting. To sum up the content. Okay. Okay, well, Evelyn said number six. That's good. It's a copy of the minutes, but this is referring to the last meeting. So maybe it's better to do, to say number five. This would be summing up. So we've heard from everyone. What we'll do is have a look at each idea. Okay, it's summing up the ideas. Okay. And finally, plan a follow-up meeting to plan a follow-up. Okay, a follow-up meeting is always a meeting that is going to be coming in the future. Okay, so which expression would be talking about a meeting maybe for the future? Mm -hmm. All right, good, Olga. That's uh, sentence three. Can you just read that? So just need to set a time for us to come back. So diaries when everyone is free. Okay, so they're talking about coming back for another meeting. So come back for a new meeting or a follow-up meeting. Okay, so I just want to remind you that all of the vocabulary and the answers from today's webinar, you will be getting on a PDF file. Okay, I think Klaus asked me earlier in the beginning of the webinar, and yes, you will be receiving a PDF file with the answers to the questions and also with the vocabulary. Okay, so you should be receiving that in the next few days. Okay. Okay, 
Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a presentation of some tips on how to organize a meeting. Okay, you're just going to listen to this presentation and you're going to take 10, you're going to take some notes. Try to write down 10 key words or expressions that you hear. Okay? So make a note of 10 key words or expressions that you hear. Okay. In a meeting, you should use a path approach to meetings. A meeting has to have P, a purpose, A, agenda, T, a time frame. You should be able to divine the purpose of the meeting in one or two sentences at most. Set an agenda. List the items you are going to review, discuss, inspect. Assign a time limit to each agenda item and identify the person responsible to speak or moderate. Set a time frame. At the very least, set a start and end time. I also recommend setting a duration for each item in the agenda. Meetings need to start on time. Don't wait for stragglers to show up. When someone arrives late, don't go back and review what has already been covered. That just wastes the time of the people who showed up on time for the meeting. If the meeting organizer sponsor doesn't show up on time, consider the meeting canceled and go back to work. How long to wait for the organizer to show up varies among companies. Wait no longer than five minutes. Someone other than the meeting organizer should keep minutes of the meeting. How detailed these are depends on the nature of what is being discussed and the skill of the available note taker. Okay, so the summary of this is that every meeting should have a purpose, a reason, the agenda should be set, and there should always be a time frame. Okay, it's important to start meetings on time and don't wait for any attendees who haven't come. Okay, so remember you will get this on the PDF file so you can review it again. Now this was the second slide, of the second part of the presentation I read to you. Okay, you can just take a few minutes to look this over and find any other keywords that you heard. Okay, right, so going to write nature of what was discussed, right, and I see your keywords that you have written. Okay, so the main summary here is that you should always have um, a note taker. So a note taker is going to be the person in the meeting who's going to take the minutes, and then they will distribute the minutes to the participants. Um, An email is a good way to distribute the minutes. Okay, also every meeting should have a topic keeper. This could be a volunteer, and um, this person's going to keep the meeting on the topic. They're going to keep the meeting and stick to the point and not stray away to any other topics. Okay, so that's also the topic keeper and the note taker are both very important part people of a meeting. Okay, okay, now we're going to look at the beginning of a meeting. Okay, you can see this is the beginning of a meeting and you can see some blanks in the paragraph. Okay, so here are some phrases that will go into this beginning of the meeting. Okay, get started, three items, have suggested, as you all know, stick to the agenda and reach a decision. Okay, so let's go over it together, and you can write in the chat box what you think would be the correct expression in the blank. Okay, right then, I think we should... Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Okay, everybody, Goldenthe and Olga and Klaus, right, get started, right. I think we should get started. Can you listen, please? Right then, okay, that's good, Evelyn. 
as you all know, we're here to, right, that's good, Evelyn. We're here to reach a decision on the main issues from the last departmental meeting. Okay. As you can see, there are right three items. Good, three items on the agenda, and we have the room until four thirty. So let's try and right. That's very good. Okay, let's try and stick to the agenda. Okay. Brian, could you start by outlining the areas, finance, okay, that's right, Evelyn have suggested. So Brian, could you start by outlining the areas finance have suggested we look at for cutting to achieve the 15% we agreed needs to be implemented. Okay, this would be a verb. Okay, so let's look at the presentation below. This is the beginning of the presentation completed. I will just read it. Right then, I think we should get started. Can you listen, please? Right then, as you all know, we're here to reach a decision on the main issues from the last departmental meeting. As you can see, there are three items on the agenda and we have the room until 4.30. So let's try and stick to the agenda. Brian, could you start by outlining the areas finance have suggested we look at for cutting to achieve the 15% we agreed needs to be implemented? Okay? So you can see this is a nice way of the beginning of a meeting. Okay? Okay, so this was the opening of a meeting. In the next session, we will be looking at language used for structuring a meeting and follow-up. Okay? So are there any other, is there any other business or is there any questions? Do you have any questions? Remember, AOCD means any other competent business. And that just could mean, are there, for you, are there any questions? Any questions about today's webinar? Thank you for your participation. You were very good. Thank you for your answers. And just remember, if you have any other questions or you would like to have any other information about our live online lessons, you can visit the website, www.humanenglish.com. And you can also write us at support at humanenglish.com. Okay, we'll be happy to answer any of your questions or to give you any other information. Okay, so have a nice evening. And thank you for coming and look forward to seeing you next time.